myself, but there's still people joining. So I'm Tobias. I'm from May Butler here. I'm actually the CEO and co-founder of May Butler. Next to me, you can see um, Julia, our customer Hi. success manager. She's helping me a little bit with the presentation today. And also, of course, she's a May Butler expert. And Ilya is also in the meeting. He's actually more in the background, taking care of the chat and I'm replying and collecting all the questions. So the webinar is recorded, so you don't need to take any notes. Um, I will send the recording to all of you tomorrow morning, probably, and then you can rewatch it if you want to see something again. Yeah, let's start with talking a little bit about the benefits and limitations of artificial intelligence. Um, benefits, there are thousands of benefits actually, and as AI is still kind of new, yeah, I know it's like one and a half years old since the, the big release of JetGPT, but still the, the development is super, super fast. Um, every day actually there's news about artificial intelligence, and of course with the um, new new developed tools, there are more and more benefits. But in general, you can say AI helps you to increase your efficiency by saving you a lot of time, improve your accuracy, and in the end, saving you a lot of money because you have spent less time on yeah, repetitive tasks, for example. Um, on this slide, I would like to focus actually more about the limitations of AI. Yes, especially when it comes to using AI in, in communication, um, because AI has sometimes problem to understand the little nuances of communication, especially when it comes to irony or sarcasm. Sometimes AI does, doesn't understand it correctly, so the answer is also not correct. Also, there's a lack of creativity and emotion, so AI can't come up with something completely new. It always needs to, yeah, to cons it only can come up with something it already knows. So that's also when you when you ask something the AI, it can't come up with a complete creative new answer. And most importantly, um, sometimes AI gives you completely correct sounding answers which are complete incorrect because an AI always tries to answer your question. So even if you ask a question which has normally no answer, it tries to come up with an answer and produce something which is maybe not 100% correct or completely incorrect. So I'm pointing this out because um, with May Butler, you're using an artificial intelligence for your for your business email communication, which is very, very important for your, for your business in the end. So the smart assistant, as we have it in the name, is acting more like an assistant for you. So it's not replacing you and it's also not putting your, your email communication on autopilot. So you're still in the driver's seat. So make sure always to review an email before you send it out, which was completely generated by an AI. Of course, I would say 99% or 95% of the time it's pretty, pretty correct, but you don't want to send out a very important email which has incorrect information in it. Yeah, now Yule will tell you a little bit more about Maya, our smart assistant. Yeah. So now we come to Mailbutler's AI tool. And yeah, as Tobias said, our AI tool is called Maya. That's the name, but we also just call it Smart Assistant. You can use whatever you prefer. So Maya is, I'm going to tell you about what Maya is. So Maya is AI powered. It's your personal email assistant that helps you write emails and manage your emails efficiently. It's integrated in your inbox, meaning that you don't have to switch to another tool. You don't have to leave your inbox. It's all right there in your inbox. You have your emails and you have Maya. And furthermore, uh, Maya is optimized for email communication. So Maya is basically, it's not just an AI tool. It's an AI tool that has been designed to manage your emails. So um, all of the features that Maya provides basically have been developed to help you with your everyday email communication. And that basically, um, by doing that, like the, it revolutionizes your email communication by making it quick and easy. 
So, um, and by making your email communication quick and easy, Maya enhances your productivity. So by helping you write emails and manage your emails, Maya, Maya basically does all the hard work for you. So you can totally focus on what really matters, which is your business. Yeah. So um, then in the next slide, um, so while Maybutler has been offering, as probably a lot of you know, we've been offering our AI tool for quite some time now, but we're always, as with every feature, we're always striving to improve things. We're always striving to make our features better. So in the last months, our developers have put really hard work into making our Maya even better. And they have developed a new amazing feature for Maya, which is the tuning feature. And that's what this demo is going to be about. So um, this is a feature that has been actually requested a lot by our users. So we're proud to finally have developed it. And um, the tuning feature basically um, gives you the option to customize the content that Maya generates for you. So here's how, um, like to be a set, he's going to present the tuning feature in detail in a short moment, but ju just to give you a rough idea. So the tuning feature works this way. So you use Maya, for example, as you can see in this um, screenshot to generate a reply. And then you just click the tuning button and then you present it with a list of tuning options. So for example, you can adjust the format, the length, the style, the tone, uh, the language of the email. And that way you basically adjust the AI generated content to your needs and make sure that the emails that Maya writes always fit into your context. That's roughly how it works. Um, and then the next slide is the demo and I'll give it over to Tobias yeah. again. Thanks a lot, Julia. So let's have a quick look at Maya in action. I'm closing the presentation now and you should all see my screen now. As you can see, I'm I'm using Apple Mail for my business emails. I have a test account which we are checking today. And of course, Mail Butler is already installed. And for the new users here in this webinar, this is what Mail Butler in the end is. It's a sidebar where all the features are located. And when you close the sidebar, you see this little icon up here, which opens and closes the sidebar. As I said before, I'm using Apple Mail. Actually, the same is also available for Outlook and Gmail, but I will demonstrate it in Apple Mail because in the end, everything looks the same in Outlook also in, and, and in Gmail. Good, let's start with the first feature. We just received an email and let's have a look at the email and as we see a pretty long email and i don't have time to read through it now so i'm asking maya actually hey maya please summarize it so here summarize clicking on it it takes around three to four seconds now it was only one and a half seconds which is great and i got a a short summary of this email you might be all surprised now because the summary is in german that's why I have, that's why, because I have my tune option set to German. Let's change it maybe to automatic. So it's adjusting to the language of the email, apply it, and we get another summary. Okay, now it's in English. So it uh, provides an update on a project X, focusing on entering the German market. Customer research has shown alignment with the US market and so on. Um, what I'm able now to do with the new feature, the tune option, for a summary, I can change the format into a list format or plain paragraph format, which in this case doesn't make a lot of sense for me. So I will keep it. And um, I can also adjust the length and let's say, okay, this is really, really brief overview about this long email. Let's make it a little bit longer with more info in it. And I said, Keep the language to automatic because I just demonstrated the German one in the beginning. Click apply, Maya again, read through that email and this time making a much longer summary. Now Maya gives me two options. I can save the summary as a snippet, which would show up here. Maybe let's have a look later. But this time I want to create a note. So maybe may, may I'll add this note feature. But I can say, okay, take this text and create a, create a note for me. 
Now I have the option to maybe add information which is not about the project X, which is not in that email, but maybe I had a call, type something in. Then of course I can share it um, with someone in my team so they also have this info, or I can add a tag. These are the normal notes features we have. Um, but maybe let's quickly do it one more time. Please create another summary. And this time we will save it as a snippet. Save summary. Clicking on it and now at the top here in the header of the sidebar, which includes like the recipient name, the subject line. Now I even have a brief summary of this email, which indicates that it was generated by um, Maya with this little icon, which is a Maya icon. That's about already about the summary feature. Let's have a look at the response feature. So I received an email from Rogelio. And he's asking if we should meet again for another meeting. If Thursday at 11 sounds good for me, and he's asking me to send some notes beforehand before the meeting. And now I have the option to reply. To reply positively or to reply negatively. So in the end, these are three functions reply positively as the name says I would say okay yes works for me reply negatively I would probably say no this date and time doesn't work for me if it's not about really about a meeting then the reply feature then Maya tries to guess what the reply is but in this case I say okay Thursday at 11 works great so I'm replying positively here again and everything is live so no nothing is as prepared for this. So I never know what kind of outcome it will be because an AI never gives you this. Even if I do the, the same thing again, the, the reply would be completely different. So the reply is thanks for reaching out. I also enjoyed our first meeting. I'm glad to hear that you think we are making good progress. Thursday works for me because I replied positively. I will make sure to send over the notes and I made beforehand to help with our discussions. Looking forward to finalizing the details and moving forward. Actually, to be honest, I think I would send it right away this way. But today we want to demonstrate a little bit the power of, of Maya. So of course we are opening the tune option. And this time we say, OK, um, maybe keep it long. For me, maybe it was a little bit too casual. Let's do a, like a very formal one. And the tone should be also neutral. And hit apply. So the wording will change now, the tone will change. Um, it's more formal, more business-like, and I'm not reading through it again, but as you can see, it's way different, different structured now um, and has more like the, the, the business language in it. And I can say, okay, sounds great, um, open draft. The email is here, ready to send to Rogelio, everything there. Um, again, the May Butler site is here because I also have email tracking enabled and so on. And now I could send it, which I will not do now. Let's close it. That's about the response feature. Then we also have the compose feature. Um, let's assume, okay, we want to send or to write a complete new email. So I, I opened a new message. I can say, okay, let's email Tiffany. I have my signature, everything here. Also a May Butler signature, by the way. And again, we talk to Maya. And this time we say, OK, please compose an email for me. And Maya is asking me, please tell me what this email is about. And we say, um, ask Tiffany for a meeting next Thursday, 3 p.m. Submit. The replies or the, the email is being generated by Maya. See how quick it is. Done. So, dear Tiffany, hope this message finds you well. I'm reaching out to schedule a meeting for next Thursday and so on. But I can already tell it's, I would say it's very formal. So, I want to tune it. And this time I say, OK, I know Tiffany pretty well. Make it casual, maybe a little bit enthusiastic. Yeah. And oops, sorry. 
and roll enthusiastic apply. Maybe important to, to mention the tune options. There are always some pre-selected and actually when you change them, they are being saved for, for the next time you're using the feature. So when you say, I'm always want to have a long length, um, casual style and maybe friendly tone, it's it's being saved until you change it. Yeah. So hey Tiffany, hope you're doing awesome. I was wondering if you might have some time like Thursday, blah, 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 blah. Okay, perfect. That would be the ideal email if I just want to schedule a meeting for 3 p.m. But normally I'm adding actually way more info. That's why I click the edit icon, the pencil. I'm back in the in the compose field where I need to do something. So I'm already asking Tiffin next Thursday to discuss that is of Black Friday campaign 2024. Um, ask Tiffany if she already evaluated campaign 2023. If yes, please present results during meeting. And let's let them come up with something to show you a little bit the power of it. Maybe ask Tiffany to invite designer John to the meeting too. And maybe John can bring some snacks. Smiley. So as you can see, I provided much more details about the email. So I'm asking for the meeting at 3 p.m. to discuss Black Friday campaign 2024. I even asking her if um, the evaluation of the campaign last year is done. Um, I wanted to present it during the meeting and to invite John and if John can bring some snacks. Now let's see what will happen. Submit. <laughs> but it should be a way longer email now because I provided a lot of information. Yeah. Oh, let's scroll up a little bit. Um, sorry. Okay. So I hope you're doing great. Um, sit down to discuss Black Friday campaign. Yes. Had your chance to evaluate campaign 2023. If you have, it would be fantastic. Could present it. I was also thinking to invite John. Um, could really make difference in how we approach a campaign. Uh, plus, it's always more fun when John's around. Maybe he can bring some snacks. And let me know if next Thursday works for you and if you can prepare the results. Yeah. So as you can see, way longer email. Um, it's including all the details. It's actually exactly what I was expecting. So it would be perfect for me. But if you say, OK, I don't like maybe it's too casual. Let's do it more formal and neutral again. And maybe this is very long, maybe medium length. Apply. So it's way shorter now. Um, it's more formal and same as always. OK, I'm good to go. I like it. Use it. The only thing I need to do because I have in my signature always have great Tobias, so I can remove this ending and I can send this email. Um, important to note, especially for the Compose feature, um, you don't need to think about when you provide context. You don't need to think about how to phrase it or stuff like that. Just put in what comes into your head. You don't need to think about the wording or anything. That's actually what the feature does for you. All you're to do is to instruct Maya what should be, um, what the content is of the email, what should be included. And as much details as you provide, as good the result is. But as you saw in the beginning, you can also keep it very general, just asking, do you have time for 3 p.m. meeting? Um, then it's also good. 
but if you want to have like more details in it, you need to provide it. Good, so I could send this email now and ask for a reply for Tiffany. As you can see, I mentioned at the very beginning, I have a follow-up reminder for all my emails. And let's come to the next feature, the improve feature. And clothing this one, don't save it. Draft. Sorry. I think I have it somewhere. Yeah. I prepared a little draft and now I did it like the very old school way. I was I sat down and wrote this email. And now I'm about to send it, but as I'm used to use um, artificial intelligence to write emails, I'm not that confident anymore. And now I'm asking Maya actually to, to check this email. So I mark the parts which I want to be checked, this, this time the entire email. And let's come to the improve feature. Here again, we have a drop down menu. We can improve only grammar only spelling mistakes or improve the entire email. So these are three features. Um, as the name says, this will only check grammar. This will only check spelling mistakes. But when I click this button, it takes entire email, of course, um, fixes all the spelling and grammar mistakes, but it's also rewriting the email a little bit because the AI might think, OK, the structure of it is not good and stuff like that. So it does it for me. But let's start simple. Let's check grammar because I have a lot of mistakes in this email. OK, taking some time this time. And here we are. As you can see, all this green stuff is something Maya found in my email to be not correct. I'm not going through it now. I trust Maya and say, OK, please replace it. So the email is updated. Now I could send it. But still, I am not that confident because when you would read it, it sounds doesn't sound good actually. So I say, okay, Maya, do your job, improve the entire email. Again, we're waiting. And here it is. So it's actually a complete something is some parts are completely rewritten. For example, this part and um, is different. And with the improve, we again can actually use the modifiers to make it sh shorter, change the style, tell Maya to, to adjust the tone and so on. But let's do it this time. OK, say, OK, I trust you, Maya. Great. I have a new email and now I could send it. Um, so we talked about the Summary feature, response feature, compose, and now the improve feature. Let's check the to do's feature, but I don't have good to do's in this email. Um, maybe let's come back. Let's come back to the email we had at the beginning. Yeah. And now I could say, um, Maya, please check for to do's in this email. So Maya is reading through this email and say, OK, um, you need to confirm the meeting but I will do that with the reply feature, so that's not a to-do for me. And send meeting notes for preparation, which is mentioned in the second question here. Okay, I say create task. I could maybe even assign it to someone in the team because that's not a to-do for me. So I can share it with someone, maybe with Julia. <laughs> and then this person needs to take care of it. Good. Um, I showed all the features now. Let's come back to the presentation. Good. Yeah. So um, yeah. So after this demo of my and the tuning button, we'd like to give you some tips which uh, we think we really recommend applying when you're using Maya. So the most important thing to keep in mind is that Maya has been designed to be a personal email assistant. That means that when talking to Maya, um, you never need to write prompts such as write email to Thomas and wish him a happy birthday. Uh, all you need to write is wish Thomas a happy birthday. That's all that's needed because obviously Maya knows it's supposed to write the email for you. Um, yeah, 
It's also important to remember uh, to provide as precise instructions as possible. Simply due to how AI works, Maya might guess certain information or add certain information if your instructions are not precise enough. So here's another example. Um, what you should write is ask Tiffany for a meeting next Tuesday 4 p.m. What you should not write is only something like schedule meeting because then Maya of course doesn't really know who you want to schedule the meeting with and when and so on. Moreover, we also recommend to always just give really short and simple instructions. So the goal of Maya is really to save you time. So it's really enough to just provide Maya with the most important keywords such as present marketing goals uh, 2023. You don't need to write a whole sentence such as could you please present the last year's marketing goals for 2023. That's way too long. Maya only needs the most important keywords. And then as you saw in the demo, Maya will compose a whole email for you, which is basically ready to send. Yeah. So um, in the next slide, um, this is already our last slide before the Q&A. But um, while this is the last point, it's a very important point. So at May Butler, privacy has always been our top priority with everything that we develop. Um, it, so naturally, Maya has also been developed with privacy in focus. Um, what makes our AI tool so special is that Maya never accesses all of your emails. Maya does never scan your inbox and read through all of your emails. Maya only accesses those emails which you are actively using Maya for. So only that one email where I click on Maya, where I click, for example, the reply feature, Maya only reads that email. It doesn't read any other emails. Um, so that basically means that you yourself have full control over which emails and which information you want to send to Maya. And if you have um, a really uh, an email which you'd rather keep private with private information, just don't use Maya for that email. Maya will never read, access or store that email. 